we have finally made it to the last module of this course. In this short module, we'll be discussing the stages in the boot process. Every computing device has a startup process in which different components on the machine are queried and tested before the operating system is loaded and control is granted to the user. This process is also called the boot process. During this process, the machine is checking itself and the high priority component's health before launching the operating system. If one of the components does not function as it should, the boot process will fail with boot errors. The boot process typically starts from the firmware, that is the BIOS or the EFI, and once booting instructions are found, the processor takes control and starts loading the operating system. The boot process can be divided into five stages. The first one is the power-up stage, the second is the POST, or Power on Self-Test stage. The third is the boot device detection. The fourth is loading the operating system. And the fifth is the transfer of control to the end user. Stage 1. Power up. The boot process starts the moment we power on the computer. Once power is applied to the main components of the motherboard, the startup code found inside the device firmware is executed, and the boot-up process is launched on the computer. Stage 2. POST, or Power on Self-Test. After powering up the computer and running the startup code, the POST process starts checking the health of all internal components and directly attached hardware, that is, memory, storage devices, peripherals, and so on. This step is designed to ensure that the hardware is in a healthy and functional condition and capable of loading the operating system from the secondary memory. Stage 3. Boot Device Detection A boot device is a storage device that could be a hard disk, an SSD drive, a CD or a DVD disk, or a USB flash drive that can read or contain the files required for an operating system to start up. Those devices are identified by specific boot files and drivers. When an operating system is installed on a storage device, it would typically contain its own I.O. or input and output systems, sometimes stored as a .sys file on the root directory, which serves later as an extension for the BIOS. Once the POST process is complete, the computer starts looking for those boot files on the storage devices, as instructed by the boot order in the BIOS. The boot order is the order in which a computer scans non-volatile storage devices for an operating system to be loaded into the RAM. It would start from the first item on the list and move down until a bootable device is detected. Once boot files are identified, the bootloader will be displayed and list the operating systems that are currently stored on the device. Typically, only one operating system would be identified, however, there are ways to store more than one operating system on a boot device using drive partitioning. This configuration is called a multi-boot or a dual boot. On this BIOS display, you can see the boot order, which starts from the CD-ROM drive. This means the first device to be checked for the boot files will be the CD-ROM. The next one on the list would be the removable devices, such as USB flash drives or external hard drives. The third one would be the internal hard drive or hard drives, and the last one would be a network resource containing boot files. On the right you can see examples of the Windows bootloader and the Linux bootloader, which is also called Grub. Stage 4. Loading the operating system. Once the hardware health is validated and the BIOS is loaded, the boot process loads the content of the storage media into the RAM. The reason for that is that in order to make changes to the data which is stored on non-volatile memory, we first need to copy it to a resource from which it can be accessed faster. The storage devices are the slowest components in a computer, and for that reason, in order to access and modify data, it is always loaded into the RAM first. Stage 5. Transfer of control to the user. The final step in the boot process is the transfer of control from the CPU to the operating system, or to the end user. This happens only once the operating system is successfully loaded into the RAM and evaluated to ensure full compliance with the onboard hardware. From that moment on, the operating system starts bringing its services up and executing its pre-configured scripts, 
programs, tasks, and auto-runs per the user's preference.